Greetings, friends. Welcome to uh, today's devotional. It is Psalm 37, which is a rather lengthy psalm. So like the others that are um, really long, I'm not going to read the whole thing. In fact, I'm not going to read much of it. But um, I do, again, when we come to these points, I invite you to, to stop the video and read the psalm yourself, all 30-something verses of it, almost, uh, yeah, 40 verses of it. And, um, and then come back to the devotional. So what, uh, what the psalmist is writing in here, which is, again, something we read quite commonly in the Psalms, is the disparity between the wicked who seem to be prospering uh, and the righteous poor who seem to be struggling with much of their lives. And um, what the psalmist is, is writing are words of encouragement, words of wisdom. And it sounds like if you read verse 25, that he is an older gentleman and he has experienced and seen life. And what he's come to understand and believe is that the riches and the wealth of the world will eventually come to nothing. And they really, in truth is, in this life, they, they don't have much meaning, though we put very a, a great deal of meaning into them uh, just because of the culture we live in, the society we live in puts such a great emphasis on on possessions and wealth and power and the things that we tend to idolize. Whereas the truth is, a contented life is one that uh, is a life that is bound in a deep relationship with God, an understanding of, of the love that God has for us, and an understanding of uh, His grace and all of the things that we've come to understand and know that are a part of uh, the gifts that we have from God. Those gifts are uh, with they're priceless. They don't have value in this world, but they are eternal. And they will last forever. And things like the presence of God and God's love for us, his, his care and concern for us, those are things that can't be purchased. And the people in this world that, that place their hope and their trust and their wealth and their possessions and their place in society will eventually come to uh, a point where that will be of, have been of no use to them. So their wealth was a, a temporary uh, advantage for them, but certainly not anything in eternal. And again, that's a really, really hard thing for us to digest uh, and to um, live with because, you know, wealth and power and those things bring us a lot of the creature comforts that we've uh, become accustomed to. Uh, and there's a lot of people out there that struggle, especially now with what's going on with, uh, with the virus. And it's very contrite and insincere or... Um, disingenuous to say that we don't need those things like money or uh, a roof or over our heads or anything like that to, in order to be happy in this world. It is true it makes our life much easier, but that leads me to thinking that we should be thankful for those things that we have, that we take for granted. And this time during the quarantine has proven to me uh, just how attached I was and how much I took things for granted, or much of the world that doesn't have uh, running water, a roof over their heads like ours, or things like air conditioning, the freedom to go to uh, grocery stores and, and buy whatever they want, uh, and think about the amount of food that we waste and throw away, uh, or food that just spoils in our refrigerator because we haven't gotten around to eat it. We have such an abundance as it is, at least most of us do, that that is something that we should be grateful for and thankful for. And it's, again, difficult during this time to think that way because, again, we're always thinking and, and we're conditioned to think that we just need more stuff and that we're entitled to those things where they are great freedoms and privileges for us that most of the world doesn't enjoy. And, and we have that as one of the most prosperous and most wealthy countries in the world. So we do have a lot. And God has blessed us with much when you compare it to the rest of the world. But uh, that, again, matters uh, way less than the relationship we have with God and how we build that relationship and how we come to understand ourselves in light of God's uh, temporary earthly blessings and his eternal blessings that are there for us and that are freely given to us without having had to do anything to get them. It was all paid for by Christ. One of the other things in the psalm that is, is important for us is there's a couple points where the psalmist writes, be still and wait for the Lord. Be patient. Uh, and, and especially during this time, I know everyone's anxious to get back to 
um, whatever normal is going to be or a public life. But there is a great danger in that, I think, in my opinion. And we need to be patient so that we can take care of each other. We can take care of ourselves and especially protect the most vulnerable people in this world, the people that live around us that we may or may not even know. Several of my friends, people I know well, uh, have contracted the virus and have no idea how or where they got it, um, but have had to deal with uh, some very significant health issues. So there's still some danger out there. We just need to be patient and wait to see what God is going to do and, and let this virus play itself out. So uh, I hope that's a bit of encouragement for you today and a reminder of just how blessed you are. So uh, until we do this again for Psalm 38, blessings to you all and be safe.